have already had a pretty good year in 2016, from multi-platform games to new exclusive to even older console games finally coming to PC, there has been a lot of great titles released this year so far. In this video, we'll be taking a look at the top 10 best PC games of 2016 so far. Let's get right into this. Number 10, Ashes of the Singularity. Strategy games have been a centerpiece of PC gaming for a long time now. Ashes of the Singularity adds to the PC's stellar library. The game is absolutely massive in scale, thousands of units fighting across very vast maps. Even for someone that isn't a big fan of strategy games, I found the game extremely engaging, engrossing, and challenging, but never frustrating. The single player story is pretty poor, but from a gameplay and visual standpoint, Ashes of the Singularity absolutely nails it. Number 9, Superhot. Superhot is one of the most unique games in a long time. The game features traditional first-person shooter mechanics, but time is a big aspect in Superhot. Time only moves when the player moves. This allows you to assess every situation and respond accurately. It's a very interesting game, and while the mechanics are not perfect stylistically, the game is fantastic. The visuals, while simplistic, also add a level of charm to the game. The major issue with Superhot is the lack of content. The game is $25 and it's also very short, however the game's replay value is pretty high and it's a game you'll go back and play multiple times. If you're looking for something unique and somewhat supporty, but obviously things go awry, supernatural beings are introduced and I don't want to get more into it since this is a very story driven game. In reality, the gameplay is very few and far between, however for those that like a well flowing story, Oxen Free is excellent. The voice acting is great and they really portray teenagers in a believable and realistic way. The art and visuals are also very good. Oxenfree was one of the surprise hits of 2016, so if you haven't given the game a look, give it a shot. Killed over three days ago. It was all over the news. Local news, anyway. Oldest living resident. Her family's been moving back and forth on the ferry, getting all of her crap. Oh, that's sort of a bummer. Yeah, well, we Number 7, Homeworld Deserts of Karak. Homeworld is another strategy game and a very old school series on PC. In 2016, Homeworld saw a brand new entry in Deserts of Karak, which is a prequel to the original game. The game is very accessible to those that don't play strategy games much, but it's not overly simplistic. The game's mechanics aren't groundbreaking by any means, again this is a part of a nearly 20 year old franchise, but the gameplay still works well in 2016. The campaign is excellent and it has a great story. If you're looking to get into strategy games the Dungeons, the game is played with a mix of real time movement and turn based combat. Darkest Dungeon is extremely challenging, there are many times you might be frustrated, some will stop playing the game entirely, however those that stick with it will find a very rewarding experience. The game is very tactical and it requires a lot of thought and planning in what you do. Darkest Dungeon is a very absorbing game experience and those that stay. The game was originally released back in 2012 and for a long time PC gamers have clamored for a release but to no avail. Finally, after years of waiting, Dragon's Dogma finally arrived to PC back in January in what was by far the most optimal version of the game. Now featuring higher resolutions, better visuals, and a much more smooth frame rate, Dragon's Dogma on PC delivered big from a technical standpoint. The game itself is often compared to Dark Souls, it's very challenging and features the same grandiose boss fights. The world is also fairly big, allowing for a lot of exploration. The hack and slash combat is good, and keep in mind, this is Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen, so it includes the base game as well as the DLC, so it's a hell of a package. Great thing and that's exactly what happened with Stardew Valley. The game is a farming simulation inspired by the likes of Harvest Moon and Rune Factory. You begin by making your character and starting off with a bit of land and a small house. The game is filled with content, giving the player an abundant amount of activities and different things to do without ever getting extremely repetitive. The game also has a very active modding community, making Stardew Valley a game that you can spend hours upon hours on. Sure, the graphics may not be the best compared to the standard today, but artistically it's fantastic to look at and its old school look works. Stardew Valley is another one of the surprise hits of the year and at the PC back in January. Serving as the follow up to the superb 2013 reboot, Rise of the Tomb Raider follows the same style as the previous game but with refinements to the gameplay. Now the game is much more diverse allowing the player to tackle objectives in multiple ways, the world is much bigger and the story is much more engaging. The game is exhilarating and action packed, however if you didn't enjoy the 2013 game, Rise of the Tomb Raider probably won't change your mind. But let's be honest, the 2013 game was great and Rise of the Tomb Raider while remaining very similar, also improves in nearly every area.
Number 2, Black Desert Online. MMORPGs are also a centerpiece to PC gaming, although it's also a genre that's been relatively stale for the past few years. Black Desert Online was one of the most anticipated MMOs in a long time. It's a Korean MMO that's been out since 2014, but it only came stateside back in March. The one thing that you'll notice right off the bat about BDO is the amazing graphics. This is one of the best looking MMOs you will ever see. And the detail from the character customization to the world itself is top notch. If you're into MMOs, Black Desert Online should be at the top of your to playlist. developing a sequel, now a PC exclusive, most were expecting an excellent game. XCOM 2 in a lot of ways is very similar to the previous game, but like with Rise of the Tomb Raider, that's not really a bad thing. Firaxis have made many improvements to the mechanics, creating a much more polished product. The different difficulty options allow accessibility to all players. Whether you want the game to really hold your hand or you want more of a challenging experience creating much more tension, XCOM 2 offers all of that. The game did have some technical issues at launch, however, since then the game has been greatly improved, so at this point, this is a very easy recommendation. So that wraps up the top 10 best PC games of 2016 so far. What do you think? Do you agree with our list? Disagree? Did we forget to mention a game? Comment your thoughts down below. Thank you for watching. From Ubisoft picking themselves up after years of half-baked Assassin's Creed to deliver The Division, the mind-bending, puzzle-happy delights of The Witness, gortastic exuberance of Doom and the Pixarian charm of Overwatch, the AAA scene is on fire right now, and not in that weird 2014 way. The momentum established from the trifecta of The Witcher 3, Fallout 4 and Metal Gear Solid 5 is showing no signs of slowing down. But with so much to hoover up and experience, can you truly say you've good? But for something a little more considered, you need XCOM. Both Enemy Unknown and Enemy Within are still masterclasses in how to provide tactically in-depth options for all manner of strategic gameplay, Yet for the sequel, Firax has somehow managed to crank the dials up even further. Light elements of stealth can now aid you in getting the drop on foes, customization and modding of soldier abilities means your squad is more unique than ever, and across the board, performance has been cranked up, allowing you to fly through levels as fast as you can plan and execute. XCOM is the granddaddy of turn-based tactical combat, and thankfully, the formerly PC-only XCOM 2 will now be getting a console release in September. At number 9, Firewatch. Firewatch may be the latest in the derisively labelled walking simulator genre, yet when the developers behind it are a super team of ex-Walking Dead and Clay Entertainment guys, bolstered by the art of Ollie Moss no less, you better believe it's one of the best. Playing as character Henry after he suffered an incredibly moving personal tragedy and moved to the Wyoming wilderness, Firewatch is a tale of isolation, friendship, and coping with life's inevitable hardships in some very relatable ways. To say more would ruin the surprise of what Firewatch is really about. Now normally, no, a game's DLC expansion wouldn't be added to a list dealing with titles that released outside of its own year, but have you seen Blood and Wine, The Witcher 3's final add-on? Not only does it spruce up the basic rendering tech power in the game for a truly gorgeous looking environment, but the world itself is gigantic, rammed full of quests, both main and side to complete, alongside a bevy of new creatures, characters, weapons, collectibles, and so much more to drink in. Seriously, under any other studio, this would have just released as a sequel, its sheer size and scope dwarfing many other open world games completely. Geralt's final adventure is already outstanding, but with such copious fan and consumer service post-launch, CD Projekt Red deserves Because if Ratchet & Clank is anything to go by, we're in for one hell of a treat. Launched alongside a movie tie-in that sadly didn't do very well with audiences or critics, the game component sees Insomniac firing on all cylinders. Animation is sublime, the frame rate perfected as the studio have remade every aspect of their 2002 original. Ratchet plays way better than you expect, proving not a super hot, the game where time only moves when you do. It could have just been a daft gimmick, but in the moment when you can literally let off the analog sticks and watch time slow to a crawl, feels fantastic. Being in control of dancing around and under bullets, catching weapons in midair, super hot is each and every Matrix inspired action scene ever composed, with you as both director and actor simultaneously. Its story may not be terribly long and is definitely a polarizing comment on where virtual reality gaming could be heading, but for its gameplay alone, super hot is truly something you need to check out for yourself. At number four, Overwatch. Every now and then you come across a franchise destined for the history books, and if there's one developer who solely owns the quill to fill those pages, it's Blizzard. Overwatch is a truly astonishing feat of game design, a smorgasbord of balanced characters and playstyles connoting all sorts of influences and genre tropes into one mightily addictive package. Like Call of Duty, try Soldier 76 with his run and gun style. Oh, and it has a loot system which rewards you for consecutive matches. It's like some weird fever dream of explosions, sex appeal, and Disney characters. Three things that sound very weird together, yet fit better than any of us could ever have imagined. At number three, Dark Souls 3. 
The whole cinematic blockbuster thing is all well and good, but when you want a game that begs replayability, one you'll get through on a steady 60 hour playtime and simply know there's 10 times more content tucked away inside, you want something like Dark Souls 3. Another exemplary outing from the masters of Hackenslash themselves, certain chunks of levels are tributes to the original, characters reprise specific roles or get fleshed out the more you explore, and the lore itself is a direct continuation of where Dark Souls 1 left off. Gameplay though, that's the good stuff. From Software have finally nailed the balance between not necessarily being too hard from the get-go, but ramping up accordingly after about an hour or so. While it might sound unnatural to enter any series on its third installment, Dark Souls 3 is the best entry point, also managing to miraculously do right by the fans that have stood by for half a decade. Number 2, Uncharted 4 A Thief's End It might not be the medium-shaking titan that The Last of Us was, but Uncharted does something nobody expected going in. It reframes the entire original trilogy by making Nathan Drake way more human. Where before we essentially treated Nate as an Indiana Jones-esque risk taker, now we're given a proper foundation to precisely why he does all of these things. A Thief's End concludes the series in landmark fashion, proving Naughty Dog are the finest and most learned developer working in gaming today. And at number one, Doom. All that said, sometimes you need a game to be a game, you know? None of this fancy cinematic posturing, no elaborate narrative, and certainly no quick time events. Id Software wrote the book on such a thing, and with their grand return to Doom some 12 years in the making, they've knocked it clean out the park and straight up to Mars. There's a number of truly innovative game mechanics to keep it all fresh. Out of ammo? Just whip out your chainsaw and carve through enemies to trigger some pickups. Likewise with health, executions restore it, encouraging you to mix up weapons and tactics on the fly. A technical powerhouse from top to bottom, take gore-soaked levels, varied demon design, phenomenally powerful weapons, and pack it all in with extra 